Absolutely. You know 95% of South Africa is electrified? Do you know that South Africa gets water today? Do you know that South Africans, they're watching a public broadcaster? All these examples I've given you are state-owned. But do you know there is that a, we have seen this experiment played is, out in other countries? I'm thinking I, I, of Zimbabwe, I'm thinking of Venezuela, and the model does not look good to many South African people who see it. You know, it looks good. We're using it now. We were better off now owning this. It's not like I'm saying, let's go and take ESCOM out of the hands of the private sector. We are owning it already. So, I and then South that. Africans have accepted and are happy with what You're we have. It already that's, and why it's a South Africans, uh, that's why South Africans are saying, let's get proper people to go and run these institutions. Are you, the, are proper, not, are you the proper person? I'm a proper guy. I mean, I don't want to go too far back into history, but at various times you failed to actually file a tax return on time. Yeah. You've been accused of different financial offenses. You've never been convicted, yeah. but though some of those yeah. uh, charges were never brought to court. But you tell South Africans, despite your own history, yeah. you are the guy to run their economy. That's why. That's a mind of a lazy person who doesn't do his work. You, you will have to refer back to 15 years. I'm, I've grown up uh -huh. over a period of time, built a solid political party. The only thing you can keep on referring to is what you interviewed me about it 12 years ago. Get something new, my brother. No, I'm very... Show a skill of an, a hard-working presenter who does his research. You can't falter me. Since I've made my mistakes on text when I was very young, when I was almost 27 years old, fixed that problem. Today, I'm a 42-year-old married man with children who has taken responsibility and built a solid party to be the third largest party without the support of white monopoly capital and the owners of the South African economy. You keep on referring to old and old things because you are now beginning to sound like a scratched CD. You have every right to tell, tell me, me of to me tell now. me you have changed. Tell me of me now. I've been let's in parliament one, for 10 years. Let's take one particular aspect of your policy positions. Yes. Do you think aligning yourself with Vladimir Putin is going to be good for South Africa? But that's what it is now. South Africa is in alliance with Russia, with India, uh, with Brazil, with China. So why are you asking me as if it's a, some policy that is going to be implemented South Africa right after now. I took over? South Africa is in alliance with Russia now. South Africa right now calls itself non-aligned. In the context of the war, but these are two different things. South Africa is an ally of Russia. Now, the second question is, where does South Africa stand on the war? It says I'm a non-aligned in relation to war, but Russia remains South Africa's friend. So we cannot create confusion around there. Don't create an impression that it is Malema who's going to come and create an alliance with Russia. But there are some very specific Actually, I will if, go, if I may I will say go so. beyond that. I will go beyond the, the friendship with Russia and in the war, I will align with Russia and I will even supply the weapons to Russia. Because Russia is in a war with, with imperialism and any agenda that seeks to push back uh, imperialist agendas, it's well within the policies of the EFF. You say quite clearly, I would arm Vladimir yes. Putin. Yes. You know that the International Criminal Court wants Vladimir Putin to face war crimes charges. Hmm. It must start with Tony Blair. It must start with George Bush. It must go to Barack Obama. Then it can go to uh, Putin. So, so let's get this so straight. You're be, saying to me and, that and your, a, your a, policy, a, if you were in power in South Africa, is quite simple that your enemy's enemy, and it seems you regard the US and its allies as the enemy, yes. your enemy's enemy yes. is your friend. Never mind if he's a suspected war criminal, never mind if the UN and the ICC say they have compelling evidence of Russian war crimes. You don't care. As far as you're concerned, my enemy's enemy no, is you, my friend. You, you're exaggerating, but, but another point which you don't want me to go there is that um, Tony Blair accepted that they were wrong about Saddam Hussein uh, to an extent that he did a, an apology of a thug, right? You, you have never called for his arrest. 
amen admitting that I, as I was wrong uh, uh, to how many people died there uh, uh, killed by those people. So all I'm saying is we are with President Putin because uh, it's not any of my enemy. It is an anti-imperialist agenda that says the American dominance and its allies should be undermined at all costs. Anti-imperialism, uh, even though Vladimir Putin is quite explicit about his desire to revive a form of empire, he says countries like Ukraine have no right to independent sovereign existence. He appears to believe that the best thing would be to revive an empire, the Soviet empire. But you're anti-imperialist? We are anti-imperialist. That's a debate for another day. Oh. If the war is not what he's talking The war is about the expansion. And had there been a, a, a common ground found, this could have been avoided. We are not for imperialism, even if it were to come from Russia. If he does that, we'll condemn it. But we know for a fact that progressive forces such as China have also aligned themselves uh, with Putin to try and create an alternative from the imperialist uh, domination of the world. And that's what the EFF is about. You admire China, you admire, it seems, Putin. What you seem to have as a vision for South Africa's future is much more along those lines, authoritarianism, than democracy. No, socialism is not authoritarianism. So, so how can you describe China as progressive? No, it's very progressive. China uh, subscribed to Leninism and Marxism, where uh, the working class controlled the commanding heights uh, of the economy and that's what we subscribe for we are of the means of production being owned and controlled by the states we want south africa through the vision and the image of china where you grow the economy where you reduce unemployment where you reduce poverty and you can't take that away uh, from china and the state plays the central role uh, with regard to that that kind of message and the messaging on Russia has seen the rand plunge against ah, the US dollar. <laughs> we, we, uh, hang on, we see many corporations in South Africa looking at establishing headquarters elsewhere. We see foreign direct investment flatlining in this country. Do you believe that the rhetoric you are using is good for the South African economy? I've been doing this from when you interviewed me 15 years ago when I was young and therefore you can't say the uh, rent to dollar crisis uh, today is created by this message that I've been spreading for for so many years from my early ages and then this no, but what I'm suggesting is that the new party. tensions between Washington and the government in South Africa have definitely affected the financial market. No, it was the uh, the crisis as we see it today as we have this conversation me and you uh, it was worsened by the irresponsible utterances by the ambassador of the USA, who just recklessly, without following the uh, proto uh, proto diplomatic protocols, uh, went mm. out to set make certain allegations our, about our country, damaging its good image, and then undermining its sovereignty in terms of choosing who its friends are. And today, we see the rent being weak because of such utterances. Why would uh, the rent be weakened by a political uh, posture that says this is what we want to uh, uh, be when we take over government? We want a government that will be owned by the corrupt free. I admire China when it comes to how it deals with crime. I admire China when it comes to how it deals with infrastructural development. I admire China on how it has dealt with poverty and unemployment. How would that weaken the rent? Is that not what the investors want for all of us? If you want to work with us, you are going to expropriate land without compensation. You are going to nationalize the mines. You are going to establish a state-owned bank. You are going to make sure that we fight crime fire by fire to make this country a safer place. Those are just but minimal, non-negotiable uh, points that will engage with anyone. Non-negotiable. Non-negotiable. Non -negotiable. Non -negotiable. 
On that basis, it's hard to imagine you can make a coalition with anyone. ANC was more than willing. I actually, ANC was at a point of signing with us on expropriation of land without compensation. Remember, we even put this in parliament. How did it pass to a point where parliament had to do an investigation if the ANC was not agreed? We were almost at the edge of getting a deal. And some young uh, ANC clowns uh, decided to uh, uh, vote against this. But we are not going to retreat in returning the land back into the hands of our people. And don't tell me about Zimbabwe. This is going to be done through a democratic means like we did in consultation with all South Africans, black and white, on how best do we get the rest of our people owning the land and other strategic sectors of the economy. You know there are some South Africans, and let us be blunt, many white South Africans yes. who fear Julius Malema. They, some of them have said to me, if Malema gets to power or close to power, I will leave this country. Do you welcome their fear or do you want to find ways to overcome their fear? I don't welcome their fear. Stephen, they said that about Mandela, the most celebrated Mandela. You're talking about me. They said if Mandela, a prisoner, becomes the president who are living in this country and they left. I was in a, the Val River the other day yeah. looking at some of the houses that whites abandoned in 1994 when Mandela became a president. They are not scared of Julius Malema. They are scared of an independent black man who is not controlled by any white person, who is not controlled by London. Last year, you said this. It was after you'd questioned whether a particular white person, why they hadn't been located and, quote, taken to an isolated space where our supporters could attend to the guy properly. And you went on to say, you must never be scared to kill. A revolution demands that at some point there must be killing because killing is part of the revolutionary uh, act. Uh, absolutely. This was last year. Absolutely. Absolutely. You can't say you're a revolutionary and then be scared to kill. But once you, you go killing uh, uh, people around, you are a terrorist. When you've got the support of the majority of your people to engage in war, and the majority of the people are with you, that is the revolution, it's not terrorism. And therefore, I'm not a terrorist. I'm, that's why I'm saying, at least for now, the conditions have not dictated that there should be anyone who should go to the bush and engage in war to kill. But if those conditions necessitate, will, will without hesitation, do that. The same way the generations before us, when conditions necessitated, they were not scared to take up guns and shoot to kill. So I'm not saying uh, anyone must be killed. All I'm saying is, let everybody come to the party. Let's build this one country and give away our privilege but for the it, privilege of question, all. Your vision of South Africa's future, will it come through the ballot box, or will it come through what you call a revolution? It will come through the ballot box. A ballot box that produces a revolutionary party will unleash the revolution. And the revolution, when it is unleashed through democratically elected government, is the changing of the system, where you radically uh, uh, defeat capitalism and introduce a socialist state. We still believe in the EFF, fundamentally so, that the power to the people must be ushered in through the ballot. And nothing else must be looked at except right. the ballot. However, when the need arises to defend ourselves through whatever means necessary, we'll do so without hesitation.